Hello, this is Jack Jackson. Let's talk a little bit about projected plane geometries in this video. In projected plane geometries, we have the following postulates. Postulate 1, there exists at least three non-collinear points. Postulate 2, every line contains at least three distinct points. Postulate 3, given any two distinct points, there exists exactly one line containing both points. Postulate 4, given any two distinct lines, their intersection is exactly one point. Notice these are similar to the some Euclidean geometry things. Um, we have a postulate similar to number one, where we have no, we have at least uh, some points that are not three non-collinear points. Uh, we have a postulate uh, something like two. We say every line contains at least two points so far in our way we've stated it. But ultimately, in, in Euclidean geometry, every line contains infinitely many points. So this, at least three, is certainly true in Euclidean geometry. Postulate three, given any two distinct points, there exists exactly one line containing both points. That's our postulate six from our Euclidean geometry postulates. And then postulate four is very different. Uh, well, not very different, just change one word. Given any two distinct lines, their intersection is exactly one point. And in, in Euclidean geometry, it's um, given two distinct lines, their intersection is at most one point. But we change it most to exactly, and that makes a big difference. Uh, just changing one adjective like that uh, can, can make, a, make a difference. So if we compare projective geometries to affine geometries, we see that they both have the same postulates 1 and 3, exactly the same. And they have similar second postulates. Postulate 2 is a little stronger in projective geometries, uh, where it requires at least three points per line, whereas affine geometries only require at least two points per line. However, postulate 4 is very different for projective geometries than for affine geometries. In affine geometries, the postulate 4 is like the Euclidean parallel postulate. So we have some parallel lines. However, postulate four for projective geometry says that any two distinct lines must intersect in exactly one point. So this means that no matter if you got two lines, they have to cross. There are no parallel lines possible. So Euclidean plane geometry is definitely not a projective plane geometry because of that, violating postulate four for projective plane geometries. And once again, we're going to consider the geometry to have only one plane containing all of the points in the geometry. So let's find a projected plane geometry of minimal size. What would be the smallest one we could make? If you remember last video, we looked at and made the smallest affine plane geometry. Let's find the smallest projected plane. So where are we going to start? Well, we've got to start with an existence one, which is number one. There's going to be at least three points. So there exists three distinct nonclinear points, A, B, and C. That's postulate one. Now that we have some points from statement one, postulate three says that if we have a pair of points, there's a unique line containing each of them. So there are lines uh, A, B containing the, the set A and B, line A, C containing the set A, C, and the unique line B, C containing the set B and C. So our notation is kind of like we've done before. Um, they're also, they're also distinct from the same argument we used about affine geometries. Uh, this part of the proof is exactly the same that starting out. Um, if, uh, if they weren't distinct lines, then A, B, and C would be collinear, and that would contradict number one. So these are distinct. There's a third point on each of these lines. By statement two, the fact that we have some lines and they're, they contain these, each of these have at least these two points on them, but there's got to be uh, at least a third point, maybe more, on these lines. So let's call those points D, E, and F so that A, B, line A, B contains point D as well as A and B. Line A, C contains point E and line B, C contains point F. So you can see that in the model here. Now, all of these are distinct from each other, so we've got at least uh, six points here. So, uh, if two of the three points added were identical, what, what, if, what if D, F, and E were the same? Any, any two of those were the same, say D and E were the same? Then we would have 
line AB and line AC intersecting at both point A and E equals D. Well, that's not allowed, so that would that's violating postulate four. So they're different, and we already know that um, they have to be different from the ones that we already have, right? Because um, because there are at least three distinct points on the line. So E cannot be D, E cannot be B, E cannot be F, E cannot be A or C. They they all they're all different. All right. So now wait a minute. Now that we have that, there has to be a line connecting C and D. Okay. Because why? Well, because any two points determine a unique line. There's exactly one line containing C and D. It's not one of our lines already. There has to be a point on that line, let's call it G, different from any of the ones we've had before. If it's the same as any of the ones we had before, we're going to have two lines inter two dis lines that are different that intersect in two points. That's not going to be allowed. Postulate 6, uh, um, po well, postulate 6 in our Euclidean process, postulate 3 here uh, would prohibit that from happening. Okay, so there's a, let's see, where are we? So there exists one line BG containing B and G. Okay, we got to connect that up. Now, that line has to intersect the line AC. Well, where could it intersect? If it intersected at A, we'd have a line going from BGA and also from ADB. They would intersect at two points. That's not allowed. If it were intersected C, we have the same problem. So it has to intersect at E. So B, G, and E have to be on the same line. Okay, now in a similar manner, there's a line containing F and G. Well, what's it got to, to do? It's got to intersect line B, D, A. Let's see. It's got to intersect A. Well, it's got to intersect A C. If it went through E, then it would go through E and G. That's not allowed. If it went through C, F G and C, then it would it would also go through G and C. So it would intersect this line through C and D twice. So that's not allowed. So the only places it could go is through A. Okay. Now there has to be a line going through E and D, and it has to intersect this line down here. So it also has to go through C, F, or B. But it can't go through B because that would go through two points on this blue line here, on line A, D. And it can't intersect C because it would go through uh, E and C. That's two points on this line. So it has to go through F. So this line I'm going to illustrate, one of the lines I'm illustrating by Euclidean circle, and the others I'm illustrating by Euclidean line segments. And so this turns out to be a, a complete model for a minimal sized uh, projected plane geometry. So this one has seven points, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And we have uh, sets of three points that are collinear, not just any set of three points, but specifically A, B, and D. That set is a line. The set A, F, and G is a line. The set uh, containing A, C, E is a line. The set B, C, and F is a line. The set B, E, G is a line. The set C, D, G is a line. The set D, E, F is a line. Now, we're not guaranteed that there's not more points on these lines, but this is the one... Uh, this is a model that does work. It does satisfy all the original postulates, and it is of minimal size. So you might go back and look at each of the original postulates and make sure that this model works. And uh, each of those postulates is satisfied by this model. Okay, we're going to come back and look at another geometry called Young's geometry in the next video.